All this National Extreme Festival action is proudly brought to you by Comcare Medical Scheme. Dunlop Tires, Ferodo, the number one in brakes, and Investcan. Welcome to round six of the Extreme Festival, the final at Swatkops for 2023's championship. Charles Fisser behind me, number 33 on his car, has a 33 point lead. But he's been hunted down big time by Darby van Amava and Anthony Pretorius. Pretorius with a mathematical chance, but he still has a chance. And there's going to be an epic battle here over two races. But more importantly right now is what's going to happen in qualifying and in Super Bowl. Let's find out. Qualifying is always important, but today probably even more. It's going to be very, very tense on circuit, but everybody pushing hard to try and get into that top six. Because the top six make it through for the all important Super Bowl. And today, it's vitally important. A couple of guys with some issues, a couple of guys happy with their laps and just waiting to see what happens and who's going to make it into that top six. There's a big surprise at the end of qualifying as the flag came out. Dude, it took you the whole year to find that lap, but you eventually got it. Yes, I did. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I just kept my concentration in this heat, but yeah, I came and kept it together and I pulled out a good lap. You gotta get another one now, that's the most important thing because yeah. uh, it's now Super Bowl, so there's only one. Oh. Uh, what's the plan? Uh, give him my all. Well, good luck, Moe, as you make it out for the top six shootout now for Super Bowl. Mo Carodio taking it uh, all season long to get into that top six. Dean Fenter went out very late, as did uh, Darby van Amava. They're gonna have to try and push through. Charles Fisser has got the target on his back. There's those mathematical chances we spoke about earlier for Anthony Pretorius and for Darby. Who's gonna have what it takes here by the time Super Bowl wraps up? Jacket flag is out and Pretorius is quickest. So Angie, keeping the mathematical chance well alive there with the Super Pole, but it makes it even more difficult when conditions change up. It's a little bit cooler out there, the engines work well, the tyres work well. Take us through your lap. Yeah, it was very tough going into turn one and two, the sun's directly into your eyes. So it's very difficult to judge where you're going to break, where you're going to lift and all of that. So I, I think I did the best job I could. It was a very decent lap and I couldn't be happier. Yo, Darby, tough one out there, but he didn't quite go according to plan, but uh, tomorrow's another day. Definitely, yo, it, uh, you can see what happens in qualifying. Um, sometimes you think you're out and then you're in again, so that was luck. I must say the last lap, especially on Super Bowl, was quite nice. Um, glad to be in front of my main rival for the weekend, so it just puts me in a bit of a better place tomorrow, but still starting third, still have a lot of work to do to come to first. But uh, yeah, well done to Anthony and them, and I just want to thank the team. The car was been good this weekend, not me, but uh, yeah, the car was just on it this weekend. We didn't speak about the 33 on your car with a 33 point lead. <laughs> the irony, I mean, um, I thought I was 35, but I'm glad I was 33, so it's going to be a lucky day tomorrow. I hope it is. Um, qualifying didn't go that good, but um, we're in it. That's, that's where we have to be. Um, tomorrow, I didn't necessarily have to win, but like all racing drivers, I want to win. But I mean, if it's not on the table, I'll just race my race, take the points we can get, and just hope for the best tomorrow. Shaw will be starting from fourth place. His uh, closest rival is in third. And Anthony Pretorius has taken one point away from the championship leader, Shaw Fisser, who's down in fourth. Luce Moy, his teammate, is ahead of him in second. And then the rest of the pack line up behind them. And it's going to be an absolutely amazing race here to wrap up the 2023 Comcare Polo Cup Championship. Join us off the break for race number one. It's off the line we go, squad recourses, Buxy Kamani trying to come through the field right from the word go. We go on board with him as he goes inside into turn one, trying to find a way through there on Tyler. And it looks like also pushing out Roshan Goodman. Goodman just ahead there pushing hard and Robinson now has just got a slight advantage. But there's a dive on the inside here from Buxy and squeezes through right behind Ethan Goodsey as they come out of turn two. Bryce Pillay had to start from pit lane. We're on board here with Foran Basha, the QV Motorsport man, under a bit of threat as Nathan Victor comes on his inside onto the back straightaway. He's tucked in here behind Dean Fenter trying to find a way through. He thinks Victor might be the right option. He dives onto the back end of Victor as they go through turn four, trying to find a way past the M-Town car of Fenter. Just up the road from them, it's uh, Karodia. Karodia tucked in behind Lusmore, back on board with Foran as we head up to the top of the hill and into the breaking point for turn five. Great outbreaking maneuvers can happen up there if you get it all right, but not this time. Foreign Basha sets it up though and gets on the inside of Dean Fenter into turn six. And he might just squeeze Fenter out, he does. So he sets it up going into turn five and cemented it going into turn six. 
the OMP bucket list car is out front and leading at this stage, but there's pressure coming onto the second car there from Nathan's Motorsport. Darby van Amava, huge pressure coming from Charles Fisser, championship leader. As they come to complete the first lap, you can see Bryce Pillay has almost got to the back of that pack, having to start from pit lane. And look at this. This is Jean-Dre Marais putting the pressure onto Buxy Kamani. Marais and Buxy are side by side as they went through turn one and now towards turn two. As we back down into turn two, you can see the pressure coming from Fissa. Fissa is uh, looking for a way past early on on Darby van Amava. He does not want to let Anthony Pretorius get away. Pretorius, as we mentioned, has got a mathematical chance. If he gets a victory in the bag, that'll certainly bring him a lot closer to Darby van Amava, but it might not be enough to get him up to the front unless something goes wrong with Charles. Charles Fiss has got to literally finish both races. If he finishes up in the top three, he could possibly even wrap it up here in this first heat. Farron Basha wants to try and get into that top three if he can. See how hard this man has been working all season long. Just got better and better behind the wheel of that car, and he's now behind Nathan Victor. The man from Cape Town keeping him out for now. There's a challenge for second. Charles Fisser going to go and try around the outside. No, he can't get around the outside of turn seven. That's a long way around turn seven. But has he got enough? What? And uh, possibly on the brakes. No, has to tuck in behind Darby again, who just places that car perfectly. So it is the uh, data and Nathan's Motorsport car in second at this stage as they come across the line with another lap completed. Jason Lusmore doing a great tail gunner roll there for Charles, keeping the rest of the pack at bay and letting the three championship rivals fight it out. Mo Carodia cannot find a way through. Here's Charles trying to go slightly different line in the turn to watch for the cutback. He's going to try and get the drive onto the short straight and then onto that back straight away and see if he can make a move up into turn four, possibly into turn five on Darby van Amava. Exactly what Farron just did, but a misgear there coming out of Mo Carodia has lost him two positions. Victor and Basha have got through. So Carodia just with a misgear coming out of turn two and it drops him back right into the clutches of Dean Fenter. His teammate and, of course, stablemate there, Kutsia, is just behind. So uh, there's some fun and games there between the two Fast Five and uh, Lee Thompson Racing Machines. JRT and Lee Thompson Racing and Fast Five and Lee Thompson Racing fighting hard there with the M-Town car. Nathan Victor for Summit Racing now closes on to the back end of Lusmore. He's bringing Ferran Basha along for the ride. QV Motorsport man not too far behind Victor, although he lost about a half a car length there on that last lap. He's lost a little bit of ground. Then it's Buxy. Buxy ahead of Jean-Dre. Jean-Dre Marie is certainly getting to grips now with that Team Red racing machine of his. And he's fighting hard with his teammate there, Tyler Robinson. She wanted to be a little bit higher up in this race, that's for sure. Didn't quite go according to plan there on the start, though. A little bit of smoke coming from somebody. Did somebody lock up here or run wide, possibly, coming out of turn eight? Yes, I think that was a possibility there of somebody just putting a wheel on the dirt. May have come from uh, Loosemore or from Victor. That's how hard those two are pushing. Out front, though, it's Pretorius hanging on. No change in the top three. Fifth place battle is where it's at, and it's uh, Victor versus Ferran Basha. Two uh, teammates there fighting with Team Fenter, and you can see how hard Mo Carodia and Ethan could see, could see a diving on the inside. Was that a miscue from Fenter? I think it might have been. Yes, indeed. Dean Fenter with a bit of an issue there. So the M Town car drops one, one position, possibly two, as Bucks is going to put an attack on him into turn four. He's around the outside. It might not be the line to take. No, I didn't think so. You can have a huge amount of uh, <laughs> the certain part of your anatomy to make a move around turn four, that's for sure. But Fenter, now under pressure. That was brilliant driving from Buxy. He saw that Fenter was going to overcommit to the inside. He went and cut back onto turn five. And up into turn five, can he make a stick? There's a little touch between the two of them. And Buxy's through. Nice bit of smooth driving there from Buxy Kamani, realizing that Fenter was going to go into turn four a little bit too hot. And he cut back to try and get the drive up the hill, and it worked for him. Now you can see Jean-Dre Marais and Tyler Robinson lining up Dean Fenter. Just behind them comes Roshan Goodman, their teammate, the, th the fourth of those Team Red cars. And behind that is Bryce Pillay trying to make up ground. There is Jean-Dre Marais looking for a way on the inside into turn number one. This time on Fenter. Fenter's got problems. Fenter's dropping by the wayside. That's four cars who've gone past him in the space of two and a half laps. He's really battling out there at the moment in that M-Town car. Tries to come back at Jean-Dre and does so. Into turn two with Tyler looking to pounce as, as if there's any problems out there between those first two cars ahead of her. She's going to make them pay if they make a mistake, that's for sure. This is Anthony Pretorius. This is a nice view. Looking straight back into the eyes of Pretorius as he goes on his merry way. He's had a plain sailing all the way through, not really being troubled by anybody else as the flag's about to come out. And he's going to take a victory, which is going to bring him closer to Darby van Amava and a little bit closer to Charles Fisser. But Charles Fisser with a third could have wrapped up this title. That third place might be enough to give him the 2023 championship. Fenter's on the inside, still going at it. And this is how we do it into the closing stages. He just gets through and he just beats Ethan Gutsia to the line. Brilliant stuff. So it's Pretorius with a win. Darby van Amava in second. Charles Fisser in third ahead of his teammate Loosemore. And it was Nathan Victor beating out Farron Basha for the top six in the first heat of Comcare Polo Cup. And with that, the Comcare Polo Cup champion is crowned, Schalfesser. 
sure the nerves on the side uh, starting the race, oh my word, I mean, I'm just glad I got got the nerves under the knees. Um, big, a big credit to Darby and Anthony, everyone, for keeping me on my toes this year. I can't take the team enough for the perfect car and my parents for all the hard work they put in. For winning the championship, I can't believe I'm saying, I mean, I had this dream. Even just competing with Polo Cups since I was a little boy, but now winning the championship, oh my word, I can't even believe I'm saying it. But yeah, I mean, big plans for next year. But now, let the party begin with the, with the boys and the team, and then, yeah. Whew, champion of 2023, can't believe I'm saying it. Second on track and still second in the championship, Darby Funamava. He's still got one more race to sort it out. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fun race, got a good start and uh, just had to manage uh, from, from there. Uh, it was a tough race, um, with the heat, the cars doesn't want to perform that good, but uh, yeah, we tried our best and uh, Anthony has done an amazing job and for sure winning a championship, so yeah, let's see what happens, but uh, yeah, looking forward to the next race. Welcome back to action now from the final race of 2023's championship for the Comcare Polo Cup. We've got the champion crown, but second place is still up for grabs. Anthony Pretorius has got to take a victory if he wants to steal that second place away from Darby van Amava. We're on board with Ferran Bascher, who goes to try and go with the two championship contenders for second and third. And it is Darby van Amava who looks like he's got the whole shot. Much better start there off the inside line from Van Amava, and he leaves Pretorius to fight it out with uh, Ferran Bascher as the two of them come almost together in towards turn number two. On the inside line there, Nathan Victor wants part of that party as well as he's gone very, very tight inside. Ooh, couple of cars onto the dirt there. And that was very lucky there from Ferran to hang on to that. The back wheel stepped out onto the dirty stuff. It's going to give Nathan Victor a slightly better run on Pretorius as well as he goes inside for turn four. A little touch on the brakes there from Victor just to maybe have a bit of a mock break there on Pretorius, but it forces the bucketless car high and wide out of turn four. The new champions right on Victor's tail, trying to squeeze through there as well. And Mo Carodio with another great start, looking to go up there with the top six as he has been all weekend long. Charles Fisser late on the brakes, also gets the inside edge just to squeeze through there on Anthony Pretorius. Race one winner, Victor's into second, Darby leads out. But Ferran Bush has got two very, very close rivals fighting it on his tail and almost up his exhaust pipe. That's how close those two cars are. Touching the dirt as they come down towards turn eight. Here comes Pretorius trying to come back at Charles. Charles shuts the door and just squeezes into turn eight on the inside line. Keeping out Pretorius. Pretorius dropping back now into the clutches of Corodia. Corodia's uh, teammate is in a huge battle. Here it is. Bryce Pillay in the mix there. That's Mo Corodia just up the road. And oh, there's a tag. Somebody's been touched on the inside. I think it might have been Ethan Goodsea. He's gone onto the inside line. Bryce Pillay just avoided that. Very, very lucky. And there you can see. Oh, big problems there. That is both the teammates, in fact. Mo Corodia and Ethan Goodsea out at turn number one. One on the inside and one on the outside. Understandably, safety car has been deployed. But let's have a look at that. This is from Bryce Pillay's point of view. Dean Fenter on the inside trying to avoid. Fenter avoids. Pillay avoids. And that's Ethan Goodsea going left. And that's Mo Corodia going right. Just through the right-hand uh, screen there, you could see Corodia's car ending up in a big slam against the wall. And we're back racing now under green after the restart. They start line astern with a restart on a rolling start and everybody stays line astern until they go past that green flag and cross the finish line. And of course the start finish line is slightly different here. The start is about 500 meters up the road from the finish line here at Swatkop. So you've got to have your wits about you. Ferran Basha certainly seems to have his wits about him this weekend and he's definitely looking for a chance to be on the podium at the final race. He's closing in now on Victor. What if he could possibly even steal a victory here? He's definitely looking like he can get through on Nathan Victor. Can he get through on Darby Funamaba? We'll have to wait and see. Victor goes left. Ferran Bush is going to be on the inside, trying to go with the outbreaking that Darby shows him. There we go. Darby climbs on the brakes. Ferran follows suit. And he goes through nicely to try and get through on the man from Cape Town. But the Summit Racing car is hounding the back end. And there you go. A little tag on the back of uh, uh, Darby van Amava from Nathan Victor and a similar tag from Ferran Bascher. He had nowhere to go. The two of them sliding out of turn six is going to give an outside chance here to Charles to get into the mix. Charles Fissel got the championship wrapped up, but he's still willing to fight it out for the last race of the season. Maybe steal the blood. Oh, Ferran Bascher out of shape after a tag there from Charles. Well held. So the champion is not giving up without a fight, and Ferran Bush is saying, you're not getting this podium. You've got your championship, let me have a podium at least here. As they go down towards turn two. Joining the party is Pretorius. He wants some more of that action. He's already taken a victory. He can smell some more if something goes wrong between the three cars ahead of him. And it looks like there could possibly be that kind of situation. That's how hard these guys are fighting. Darby's got his head down. 
He's not even looking at his rearview mirrors. He's leaving them to fight it behind him. You can see a bit of battle scars there on the front end of Charles' car. That's from the tag he gave uh, Ferran Basha coming out of turn six on the last lap. He's dropped back behind Pretorius now, who's now trying to close down here on this man that we're on board with. The QV Motorsport machine of Ferran Basha. He's got Victor firmly in his sights. That Summit Racing and Floor Store on trend car is definitely in trouble. And it means that uh, the QV Motorsport car could possibly spoil the day there for Victor and his chances of a second place on the podium. Final podium of the season is up for grabs. Two cars fighting for it. They're not going to catch Darby. He's got this plane and sailing out front. But I can tell you something, the fight is not done yet for second and third. Possibly even two, three, four, and five if uh, both Pretorius and Fissa can join the party. Back on board here for Ferran as he goes through turn one. Tricky corner to get right. You can see just how hard it is and how hard and smooth you've got to be going into that turn. And then it's all the way down into second gear as they come out of turn two. Pushing hard now. How many guys have got pushed to pass mechanisms left? Have they all been used so far? Or is there a couple left up the sleeves there that can maybe spoil the day here for a couple of drivers involved in this? Charles has dropped back into fourth. I think he's going to settle for fourth. He's not going to worry too much. He's going to allow Anthony Pretorius to have a go yet for Ron Basha. And both of them try and catch Darby van der Mavre. Nathan Victor still in the mix though. I can tell you something. Victor would love this second place podium. If he can keep it all together, the man from Cape Town has had a fantastic season. And is certainly going to... Oh, as I say that, he gets out of shape. Nathan Victor just overcooks it into turn five. And that is not what you want to be doing. Commentators curse there, buddy. Sorry about that. But Nathan Victor trying so hard and trying too hard. He just locks it up going into turn five. And that has given Farron Basha the chance of second. Pretorius could possibly wrap up the overall for the day if he stays where he is there in third. The flag's about to come out. There's a good possibility that he's going to get that. So it'll be a good finish there for Team Bucketless Racing. And also the fastest lap for Anthony Pretorius. But a penalty drops him down into fifth place in the overall standings after race two. Darby van der takes the victory ahead of Farron Basha and Victor and Fissa three and four. Pretorius and Nussmore making up the top six. Yeah, definitely a tough start to the season. But we managed to come back throughout the season and manage the third place overall. So it was definitely tough, but it's something to learn from and move forward. Yeah, it's been a good year so far. We uh, learned a lot. Um, yeah, it's been a, a tight battle with Charles all year. And um, yeah, it's uh, good to finish it off well. Um, we don't know uh, yeah, what's coming up, but uh, hopefully something big in the future. Um, yeah, I just want to thank VW and uh, my team and my, my family and everyone supporting me this year. Yeah, I mean, the championship was it was a long one. Yeah, we've had a lot of ups and downs in the season. After East London, our pace seemed to come back. So, yeah, we're very grateful for that. And, yeah, it's been a good few races. This last weekend here was was had its own ups and downs. You know, we had good pace in practice. Qualifying didn't really go our way, so we were on our back foot for the races. And luckily, we had two decent races. And the second race was, you know, we managed to start in third and we got a second place from there. So we really can't argue with that. We can't be unhappy. It's an amazing result for us and for the team. And a big thanks to QV Motorsport this year for all their hard work and all their support and it means a lot to me. Top three celebrating there for the 2023 Comcare Polo Cup Championship. Fissa took the victory. Dolly van der in second and Pretorius in third with Basha and Victor being big threats for next year. Join us off the break for more action from the final round of the Extreme Festival.